Mary, Queen of Scots reign was a turbulent one. The Reformation had become a juggernaut, driving its way through Scottish society and steamrollering the Catholic Queen along its way. Her reign had also been completely destabilised by claims of adultery, treason and murder, culminating in the explosion at Kirkafield that killed her second husband, Lord Darnley. Accused of murdering Darnley, James Hepburn, 4th Earl of Bothwell and Master of Earlston Castle, was tried but acquitted, possibly not in the most just of circumstances. Almost immediately following his acquittal, Bothwell petitioned a number of noble, nobles and bishops to be allowed to marry the recently widowed Queen and secured the backing of many of them in the Ainsley Tavern bond. After this, he waylaid her on the road to Edinburgh with a sizeable force, telling her she would be in danger in the city and took her to his castle at Dunbar. By many accounts, once he had her there, he ravished her before forcing her to agree to marriage. Very much not my idea of husband material and possibly not hers either. But it was done in the Great Hall at Edinburgh Castle and officiated according to Protestant rites by the Bishop of Orkney. The marriage was under extreme external pressure from the start and after leaving Bothwell at Carberry Hill just about a month later, Mary was captured and imprisoned at Loch Leven Castle. They never saw each other again. During her time as a prisoner, her illegitimate brother, the Earl of Moray, made her abdicate in favour of her young son, James, but Mary managed to escape. She raised an army to try and take back the throne from her brother's control, but was badly defeated at the Battle of Langside. Forced on the run, Mary shaved off her distinctive red hair and found herself fleeing into Galloway with a small coterie of faithful lords, including Lord Herries of Tregles, the Bishop of Galloway and Lord Kenmure. As she made her way down through the Glen Kens along the right-hand side of the River Ken, Lord Herries pointed out Earlston Castle and she is alleged to have burst into tears. She passed by Ken Muir Castle and may have stayed there briefly. According to Robert Trotter, her loot was left at the castle. Her retinue stayed a night at Terregles, intending to cross the border into England over the Esk, but then instead they changed plans and made their way towards Dundreddon Abbey and the Solway coast. At Tunland, she had her men destroy the ancient, possibly even Roman wooden bridge across the Dee and she waited in a nearby cottage whilst it was destroyed. At Dundrennan Abbey, her nobles apparently begged her not to go to England, but to wait at the Abbey for a ship to take her to France. But she was confident of Elizabeth I of England's support to reclaim the throne. She spent the night there and then took a boat to Workington from what is now called Port Mary. The Earl of Moray punished many of those lords in burning Kenmuir Castle and Shermer's on the opposite bank of Loch Ken. Lord Herries had his lands forfeited. Ownership of Earlston passed on first to the Sinclair family but eventually on to the Gordon family. Mary spent 19 fruitless years in exile before being accused of treason and executed by Elizabeth. James Hepburn fled to Denmark but was imprisoned by the king there for his treatment of his first wife, Anna Thronsden. He died there seven years later in horrific conditions.